my name's Libby and I do level 3 public services at Caldale College. Since I've joined my course I've been out in the community doing litter picking, helping create habitats and also room barking. Working with you in the process from the college has been excellent. You know, the feedback's been great, so we'll definitely work with you a lot more. And, and it's, it's making sure that we understand what you want from us and vice versa as well. So it's been an interesting first step for us. As I said, we've had the apprentices before. We'll definitely do more of it. Um, we'll definitely take more people in there as well. I think next time we'd like to take more than one person because you, you can actually bounce off each other as well. So it'll be interesting to see how we do that next time. We recruited the support of RISE at Caldwell College to help upskill our company. We've seen huge benefits. Um, there's far more organisation, people are able to work in a more efficient way and we've really streamlined processes as a result. I'm uh, John Rees, I'm the Principal and Chief Executive here at Golden Hill College. So uh, this is our first uh, community event. We're, uh, we're running the event uh, online this year, but uh, it's really an opportunity for us to, I think, reflect upon uh, the wide-ranging uh, achievements of, of students uh, across the college and in our community, and also uh, give, our, you know, give ourselves the opportunity for community partners, members of our wider community, to actually kind of look uh, inside the college and get a sense of what goes on here. It's been really difficult for the last couple of years perhaps to showcase the, the wide range of things that happen in the college and uh, we thought by pulling together this, uh, this package it would be a really good opportunity just to share far and wide the achievements of the, of the college. We wanted to take this opportunity also to, um, to bring the community together so we've involved a wide range of partners in this event. Uh, the college just doesn't work on its own in isolation and uh, everything we do we try to make sure that we're engaging our partners for the benefit of our students and for the benefit of our communities. Uh, we obviously want to take this opportunity also to, to, to reflect on the achievements of the last year in particular and to, um, and to use this opportunity to showcase and celebrate a wide range of student achievements. Planning. We've established some exciting new partnerships, and there's been a lot, there's been a lot of planning to um, to launch a couple of really key initiatives in this last 12 months. Uh, first of all, you may have heard about our um, expansion of the college into a new campus at Brighouse, which is our tech centre. That's the engineering centre where we're working with key industry partners in a key um, key location for the engineering and manufacturing sector down in Brighouse and we've relaunched some, a wide range of engineering and manufacturing apprenticeships down there and I've got some really exciting plans for the future in terms of expanding that offer and engaging more people in such a key sector for our economy. This year's also been really crucial because it's year one of our T-level delivery. T-levels are really exciting, new qualifications uh, equivalent to three A-levels and we've been uh, really pleased that we've been amongst the first to be able to offer the new T-levels in digital and health and we've got more to come in the future. We've got uh, some key developments uh, taking place regionally as well and Calderdale College has been at the forefront of those. Um, this year has been the first year of adult education funding being devolved to the Leeds City region so we've been working really closely with our partners at the West Yorkshire Combined Authority to try and use that adult funding in the best way possible and to try and make sure that together we plan a really um, effective and, and, and really high calibre adult skills offer for, for the Calderdale community in the years to come and we hope that will be something that uh, really builds over the next few years. Really key um, achievement for the last year have been the outstanding achievements of our academy sports teams. We've had uh, success across the board, we've established new, um, a new netball academy as part of that uh, expansion of that programme during this year and uh, in terms of competition success we've seen the basketball 
and football teams going on to, to win their leagues and achieve you know, really great things, including at a national level. So hugely uh, impressed and, and really proud of the achievements of those teams, so well done. And now I'd like to introduce you to Councillor Sylvia Dacre, who's going to join us to talk about Calderdale's wider skills priorities. Mm -hmm. here at this event today and I'm really looking forward to hearing about some of the innovative and exciting things that Coldsdale and its college and its partners are doing to enhance the skills agenda for people in the borough. Coldsdale Council has three political priorities and they are tackling inequalities, resilient towns and tackling the climate emergency and as far as we are concerned skills are central to achieving all of those three priorities. Places like Calderdale College are absolutely central to the skills agenda. Calderdale Council is not a skills training provider as such. What we do is work in partnership and obviously one of our most important partners is Calderdale College. And it, it, we rely on you to provide the training that we think is crucial for our borough. So one of the things that is so important about skills is to ensure that everybody can take advantage of skills training. And there are some people who face bigger barriers than others. So you might have a disability, you might have a language barrier, you might have caring responsibilities. And Calderdale does its best to play its part in ensuring that those barriers are broken down so that you everyone can take advantage of the opportunities provided by the college. My name is Julia Gray and I'm the Vice Principal for Curriculum Quality and Student Services at Calderdale College. So each year we, we very carefully plan how we're going to um, put our curriculum together by looking at what the skills needs are within the, within the city region and also more carefully within Calderdale itself. So we look at what the skill shortages are. So we know, for example, that there are clear needs within the digital and health sectors within Calderdale and within the Leeds City region. The labour market information is telling us that there are also skill shortages within um, uh, the, the, the more advanced technical skills such, uh, within construction such as electrical, plumbing, engineering. So we very carefully planned and designed our curriculum to ensure that we are meeting those skills needs and that we are producing people who are able to work within those areas and who leave the college able and ready to work within those areas straight away. We have established partners, long-term established partners that we've been working with such as Lloyds Banking Group. We also do a lot of work with uh, Calderdale and Huddersfield Foundation Trust uh, working within the NHS. Yeah, my name is Tracy Thompson. I am the job coach on Project Search which is an internship based at Calderdale Royal Hospital. Uh, Project Search is funded by Calderdale Council. Um, Calderdale College provide the staff and Calderdale Royal Hospital Trust provide the business, so we, they provide the classroom. Project Search is the chance for these young adults to prove to people that they can do things. And it's about businesses and employers just giving them a chance, letting them prove themselves that they can do it. We found that there are a lot of jobs within the NHS that their staff don't have time to do. They might be small jobs, they might be repetitive jobs, but simple jobs that their staff don't have time to do, our interns can go in there and do that job. And we've had departments who have loved the interns that much that they've actually employed them. So Brandon was a project search intern a couple of years ago. Um, he came to us wanting to be a cleaner, wanted to find paid work, just needed work experience. So eventually applied for two jobs within the NHS as cleaners and got offered both roles. Um, took one with Calderdale and Huddersfield Solutions in HRI and he's still there and absolutely loving it. If it wasn't for Project, I would probably think I'll just be at home playing Xbox. Just, oh, I think Project was the best decision I've made in my life so far. T-Levels are the government's flagship new level 3 provision. 
So they are the technical equivalent of A-levels. They are um, quite large programmes and they are the equivalent of, of three A-levels. They're delivered as a little bit of a mixed model. So any student who is undertaking a T-level will be expected to spend time both in the classroom but also in the workplace. So uh, they, all students studying a T-level will undertake um, an industry placement. And that industry placement is extended and is about 20% of the programme overall. So a student will spend about 80% of their time based at the college, in the classroom, and about 20% of the time um, at an industry placement. T-levels are for young people aged between 16 and 19, or between the ages of 16 and 25 if you have an education, health and care plan. And they are the leading level three provision moving forward uh, that the government has introduced. We're so proud at Calderdale College to be able to run T-levels. And we were, we were one of the first colleges in the country to run T-levels when we introduced them in 2021. So we're running our T-levels this year in digital and health subjects. And they're really exciting. We've had some great opportunities to develop industry placements within those T-level subjects. So for example, in digital, we've got uh, students who are doing really exciting placements with impact gamers. They're having a brilliant time and making, as I said before, a really fantastic contribution to the organisation. We first started working with Calderdale College back in 2019, where some volunteers from programming courses came to support our work. Since February this year, we've had five T-level students carrying out their industry placements with us. This is the first time we've taken on interns and it's really boosted our work. It means we can add so much more value to projects that we do with schools and with the community. The students help complete live projects covering all aspects of game design, coding, artwork, bug testing, publishing, all the things we can quite easily rush at the end of a project. Meaning, not only are we able to offer more to schools, but a much higher quality as well. We're really looking forward to what the next year will hold with these students as they grow in their skills and abilities. The T-level course is mainly about overall computing. This can consist of hardware, software, like an overall online basis of how everything works. Yeah, good morning. So, Tim Mercer, founder and uh, CEO of Vapor Cloud. And we're a tech business based in Huddersfield. Yeah. Um, well, kids has been great for us actually because what we're always looking for is youth, tech, tech's always changing. And so, and you've got Luddites like me, or older people in our business or in our sector who constantly stick with the same. We're looking for the you to come through to make the changes. And when he comes in, he's got lots of questions, lots of challenges around it. And we're always pulling the poker and saying, what would you do then? How would you do that? And what do you think about that? And when does that go? But it's fresh and it's exciting and he's new, he's keen to learn. Well, he so, works very closely with the finance team and with the operations team. But the, the piece around him, what we're asking him for is to ask questions and to look at things in a slightly different way, a way that we wouldn't normally look at. They, they help shape your business and you can help them mould and grow them with the firm. We're truly committed to working across the district and across all our communities that, that locally reside within Calderdale. We've built some strong local partnerships working in particular with the council across various departments and the third sector. So one of the local initiatives that we're very active in is the Park and Wall Awards uh, Inclusive Economy uh, Initiative uh, funded through the Council and the Combined Authority um, and the Project Programme Coordinator is uh, Vicky McGee uh, who I work closely with. Our pilot Inclusive Economy project in Park and Wall it is about testing how investing locally um, can help to improve the economy so that it works better for everybody. So the college has been involved in the Inclusive Economy project since the beginning. It, it, um, Ibrahim Dokrat chairs our Inclusive Economy steering group. 
um, which is made up of local community stakeholders. And the college, obviously, as a main provider of um, skills and education, has got a, a huge role to play in a stronger economy, but it actually it's through its developing community anchor role that we're really starting to see how it, it, it can um, support us towards an inclusive economy. This June, a new mouth-watering community food festival is coming to Halifax. Flavourfest is a month-long celebration of culture and diversity, organised by and delivered within one of the most culturally vibrant and distinctive places in Calderdale, with events and activities planned across multiple locations for people to enjoy, learn and experience a larger life. Welcome to Park and Warley, or West Central Halifax, a place where the community is driving economic, social and environmental change to reduce inequalities and build an inclusive economy that brings opportunity for everyone. So one of the um, objectives of the festival was to make sure that it was co-produced and um, community-led and Calderdale College was really key to that because you involved your students um, from the beginning really to say this is what we want to do, let's talk about how we can um, you can be involved in the planning and the delivery of this festival. Another way that the college has really helped, in fact, completely save the day for us, is our launch event at People's Park, which was planned for the 1st of um, June, was almost completely washed out. We were supposed to be in People's Park and we went into the site check the day before and it was sodden and we knew we'd got vehicles we needed to drive on there and you know, absorb football and things and it just wasn't going to be safe. From that one afternoon to the next day, we ended up having the hall, half of the hallway, the dance studio, one of the three GI pitches for the Zorb football, and the car park outside as well. They cordoned a massive area of that, that off, so we could have the climbing wall and the caving unit. And it was such a positive, successful event. It worked really well, and we're so great, grateful for that because it would have been, you know, that that was our kicking off. Flavor Fest, it would have been a real disappointment if that couldn't have happened. Social action pro projects are very much about giving back to the community. What's important locally to our residents, uh, not just in uh, Halifax but across the district, we want as a college, want to work across the districts, which uh, we're proud to say we do, um, working with both young people and adults. Uh, and community groups and range from green projects working with for example the um, local railway station in Halifax and uh, Andy's Man Club. Colbert College has offered us lots of support over the previous few years be that from opportunities when we have used the, the site as a venue on occasions where we've not been able to use the venue We've attended awareness events here and just recently one of our amazing volunteers, Kieran, has been working together with some of the health and social care students um, on a project focusing on how they've been able to help Andy's Man Club um, and that's been an, an amazing success. They did some events in the town centre, they got our gazebo out, they were tireless throughout the day in raising awareness of, of Andy's Man Club and the work that we do and our hope would be that there will be more men that have attended our sessions as a result of that work. It's been great to see and it's been an amazing link up. Kind of got the idea from when um, Andy's Man Club came in to do a stall. We worked really well together to um, make a stall and attend a stall in town. They used their own strengths and their own skills. Um, some were creative so they did the posters and um, and worked on their own skills to, to make sure that the project, that they came together as a team. So they, each team ran their own project. It's great for them to be able to do something different from that point of view. But I think it's also really good, um, I think, for anyone to learn that to do things for others um, for no reason. You know, volunteering and giving to the community. And also, these students are the future of Calderdale, you know, they are the future mental health workers of Calderdale, so, you know, um, I just think it just, it was just such a good project from that point of view, and it's good for them to also use their skills that they're learning in class um, to put out there in the community.
One of our core roles as a LEP is to work with businesses, FE colleges, training providers and local authorities to identify the skills and wider development needs that will promote inclusive and sustainable economic growth in our region. Calderdale College currently delivers a number of significant projects across a wide geographical area of interest to us as a LEP, covering not just York and North Yorkshire, but also East Riding. The ESF flagship skills support for the workforce project has, it's true to say, been a game changer for us. Since April 2019 alone, well over 500 of our businesses have been supported and more than 1,600 employees upskilled. So we're very much looking forward to continuing to work with the college, not just with respect to skill support for the workforce, but also with its relatively new delivery, focused on specialist skills, the promotion of apprenticeships and leadership and management. As well as reflecting on uh, the year just gone, there's lots to be excited about in the year ahead. Um, more to come in terms of T-levels, expanding our T-level offer, creating new opportunities at advanced level for more students. We've got some really fur exciting further developments down at our Brickhouse campus. In addition to the apprenticeship and the new study programme offer there, we're, we're hoping to establish the Industry 4.0 hub, which will uh, look at uh, emerging and new technologies across the engineering and manufacturing sectors. Uh, and in addition to that, we've also got exciting new plans to further develop our curriculum, key focus on environmental sustainability and developing around green skills, and also uh, refreshing and working with our colleagues at the Combined Authority to ensure that the adult skills offer is really focused on future skills needs and supporting our adults in our wider community. So to close up the event, it gives me great pleasure to introduce one of our incredibly talented students, Jessica Bowers. Slip inside the eye of your mind Don't you know you might find In a better place to play You say that you'll never be but you know that you've seen Slowly fade away So we start a revolution from my bed Cause you said the brains I had went to my head Step outside summertime um, The access course um, just give me the opportunity to do that. I had no A levels to get into university, so coming here and doing that has given me um, obviously the help that I need to go and do the career that I want. It's so sad they get away. She knows it's too late as she's walking on by. Her soul slides away. But don't look back in anger, I heard you say The thing that I enjoyed about the most in the future leaders, there's a couple of things. The first one being the opportunities it gave me to network with other people across the, um, the system and the district. We were really lucky, we had a broad range of people in my cohort from the local authority, the fire brigade, health services, and then other businesses such as insurance. The networking opportunities were massive and have used those in the current role. And then the other um, things that I really enjoyed was learning that knowledge and the theory around why we manage and why good leadership is good leadership. So being able to put that knowledge to the test again underpinning what I already knew has been massively beneficial. Take that look from off your face Cause you ain't never gonna burn my heart out And so sad they can't wait She knows it's too late as she's walking on by my soul slides away But don't look back in anger I heard you
And so sadly get away She knows it's too late And she's walking on by The soul slides away But don't look back in anger I heard you say And so savvy can wait She knows it's too late And she's walking on by My soul slides away But don't look back in anger Don't look back in anger I heard you Listen to the 